In case you didn't know, this past October 23, Capture One Pro 16.5 was released, the last of the leading RAW editors to release in 2024 following DxO Photo Lab, Luminar Neo, and On One Photo RAW. In this video, we're going to be running through the four new features and answering the question whether you should upgrade, particularly if you're one of those who bought a perpetual license for Capture One version 16.3 last October. By the way, in case you didn't know, starting in version 16.3, Capture One changed its policy of releasing feature updates. It is now released every few months instead of yearly in bulk as in previous versions. This change has been likely made to satisfy both subscription customers who expect regular incremental releases and perpetual license customers which expect big updates around this time of the year. The downside of the Capture One model though is unlike other photo editing software companies which include the updates as long as it is within one year of purchase, Capture One does not. This means that if you forked out $300 for a perpetual license of version 16.3 last October, you would not have access to an update released in May even though it was less than 7 months from purchase. This was obviously done to increase the value proposition of the subscription model over perpetual license, although it may have the unwanted side effect of annoying some perpetual license holders. In any case, given this unusual release policy, unlike with other editors where I only look at the current release, for Capture One, I'll be including the new features of the past year, including those from 16.4 and 16.5, which were not made available to perpetual license purchasers of version 16.3. With that background out of the way, let's move on to the features. The first new feature is people masking. This comes with the latest 16.5 update. Capture One becomes the first raw editor outside of Lightroom to offer people masking, which Capture One claims is the most accurate in the industry. In case you didn't know, people masking lets you quickly mask specific areas of a person with a single click using AI. These areas are body skin, face skin, eyes, eyebrows, lips, and hair. To demonstrate, let's view some examples. To access people masking, I'll navigate to the Layers and Masks panel. From the People drop-down, I'll select Hair. I'll click Create Mask. And just like that, the hair is masked and it's pretty accurate. This accuracy is maintained even when masking eyes and facial skin. Next, let's look at some more difficult examples wherein we have the face not only underexposed but also facing different orientations. As you can see, Capture One's people masking works great even in these tough scenarios. Another benefit of people masking is one that no other raw editor apart from Lightroom can do and that is to perform sophisticated local adjustments on multiple portraits. To demonstrate, I'll first make adjustments to a single image. I'll brighten the eyes, facial skin, I'll saturate the lips. Next, I'll create a style. I'll click on the Styles tab. I'll click on the Options button. I'll click Save Style. In the dialog, you can see all the local adjustments are included in the style. I'll click Save. I'll name the style Face Adjust Style. I'll select the rest of the portraits to be included in the processing. I'll navigate back to Styles. I'll click on the Face Adjust Style. And there you go. With just one click, all the images have the sophisticated local adjustments applied and it just works. The second new feature is Match Look. Match Look follows Luminar Neo's color transfer and On One's Match Color, which just like Match Look, 
allows for an image to mimic the colors and overall look of a reference image with AI. Match look, though, in my view, is a more sophisticated implementation than those tools, unlike color transfer and match color, wherein the adjustments are already baked into the final result and processed in a black box. Match look creates the look using Capture One's tools, which not only allows you to check how these tools created the look, but allows you to adjust the look non-destructively. To demonstrate, let's work with these three images. Two are raw and one is JPEG. As you can see, none of the colors in these images look particularly great with an ugly color cast in each. Instead of fiddling around with the controls, which would take a lot more time, let's improve the image the easy way with Match Look. To add Match Look, I'll simply right click on the navigation bar in any of the panels. I'll click Add Tool. I'll click Match Look. Doing that will add the Match Look panel into the sidebar. Next, let's select our reference image. For this task, I'll choose this image, which has a nice bright exposure with some pleasing pastel colors and a neutral cast. I'll drag the image into the placeholder. With the target photo selected, I'll click Apply. And there you go. With just one click, the look of the reference image has been properly transferred into the target photo. Super easy. Unfortunately though, the result of this portrait was overdone. No problem. Looking at the exposure and high dynamic range panels, you can see that Match Look has moved the various sliders using AI in order to achieve the desired look. To correct it is as simple as moving the sliders. I'll reduce the exposure and the highlight slider. And just like that, a better result. Here is the before and the after. Next, let's try another reference photo. This time, let's use a black and white image. I'll drag in the reference photo. I'll apply the adjustment. Once again, all the photos acquire the look of the reference photo. Finally, let's try a reference photo with a stylish reddish color cast. And again, a good result. So that was Match Look. Let's move on to the next feature. The third new feature is AI Crop. If you're sick of constantly cropping a boatload of images, then AI Crop, which was introduced in Capture One 16.4.0 back in May, might be what the doctor ordered. AI Crop allows for automatically aligning composition across images. To demonstrate, let's first add the tool. Next, I'll choose an aspect ratio. I'll position the crop tool. I'll click auto to let the AI decide how to crop the rest of the images. I'll click the select as reference to make this photo the reference photo. I'll select the rest of the target images. I'll click apply reference. And with that, the rest of the photos are intelligently cropped in a similar way to the reference photo, but without human intervention. An enormous time saver. The fourth new feature is faster masking. This feature was also introduced in version 16.4 back in May. Object masking introduced in Capture One version 16.3 was great. Unfortunately though, there was an initial lag when clicking the object masking control. While I did not find it particularly annoying, to Capture One's credit, they've addressed the issue. Capture One says subject and background masks is now four times faster and 18 times faster for object masking, a pretty significant improvement. So there you have it, four new features of Capture One 16.5 and 16.4. Should you upgrade? Well, if you purchased a version 16.3 perpetual license, I would say that if you are a portrait photographer overloaded with the need to perform countless local adjustments, then I would say yes. As you've seen, 
the new people masking just works, it is extremely accurate, and will genuinely save you time and effort in a big way. On the other hand, if you are not a portrait photographer, perhaps you are a landscape photographer or someone who just doesn't need to perform local adjustments on multiple portraits, then I'd say no. The other new features, match look, AI crop, and significantly faster masking, while genuinely useful, well implemented, and nice to have, unfortunately does not come even close to justifying the $300 price tag for another perpetual license. I'd recommend to wait for a more substantial improvement that genuinely helps your photo editing. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you're getting the latest Capture One Pro 16.5. What do you think of this release? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.